गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबॉडी टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट एस आर पी और सकर पम्प और पम्प जैक दे डिफरेंट नेम्स आर देर आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड दिस इज पम्प जैक पम्प जैक सकर पम्प और बीम पम्प बीम पम्प और रॉड पम्प समटाइम दे से नॉडिंग डंग टी समाइम से हॉर्स हेड सो डिफरेंट नेम्स आर देर सो वेन एवर यू आर स्टडिंग और सर्चिंग एनी डॉक्यूमेंट इन गूगल और let's see where is the chat gpt also so in that case you should use different terms so that you can get all the information related to this because some one has written some article or some document in, in naming as pump jack so uh, if you are searching srp you may not get that same document so you have to search all the combination of terms then you can get the information so i already told that this is a positive displacement pump if you can remember that last lecture we discussed pumps pumps will be divided into one will be positive displacement type pump another will be kinetic pump but when we are discussing about positive displacement so you can see the right hand picture one is hand pump it is used in household applications or uh, rural applications this is like in your dispenser water dispenser you can use like if you continuously move it up and down what will be filling on the glass and you can drink and this is human heart also one a positive displacement pump so this positive displacement implies that that the certain amount of volume it will take and it will deliver so irrespective of pressure or head requirement it will deliver but flow rate will be limited uh, like uh, i already told that human heart is pumping at constant rate okay so constant rate your fluid or blood is flowing all over the body but if you are running so that time your body needs more energy more oxygen so in that case your body needs more uh, blood flow so if you are developing more blood flow that means pump will be uh, pump rate pumping rate or heart beat will be increasing when heart beat increasing you are developing more fluid flow not pressure actually so in that case hand, hand pump also slowly you are moving hand pump that that this one and so what happen if you are increasing that rate your flow rate will be increasing so similar way that uh, table top device also it will increase flow rate if you are increasing the rate so in that case you are increasing flow rate but pressure development will be almost constant as already i discussed in previous lecture you can remember h q q means flow rate flow rate may be uh, gpm gallon per minute or maybe your meter cube per second or different units you can use what if you are using for oil industry so normally you will be using field unit gallon per minute but in many cases especially ongc and other some companies they are using meter cube per second also uh, so if you if, whenever you are drawing any curve or you are calculating for oil and gas industry applications or any type of application if you have to look at the unit if you are mismatching units then your result may be wrong okay so h in terms of meter why meter normally we get pressure we say pressure psi on it of a meter square but head means equivalent liquid height This is called head. Liquid means like, um, some 14.57 psi pressure. That means 10 meter head actually, approximately we assume. So for SRP, the curve will be like this. How we got curve? You can remember the picture uh, uh, la last day we exp I explained. Like I have one pump here. Pump is getting water from this tank, and gradually you close the. Uh, some valve will be there so gradually you turn the valve so when gradually turning the valve your pressure sensor your flow meter sensor your flow meter sensor both will be showing flow meter will be showing same flow rate but pressure will be increasing or head will be increasing okay when head is increasing you can draw this vertical curve okay so that means this vertical curve or vertical line it is not touching h h curve or y axis okay that means infinity head you can produce but if you are considering centrifugal pump on the other hand centrifugal pump curve will be like this that means maximum head is limited all right this is for centrifugal this is for positive displacement positive displacement type pump so a positive displacement type uh, type pump is sakarat pump 
or hand pump or all the two pictures you, has, you can see here a heart and this tabletop device of uh, water pumping and you can have progressive gravity pump you can have diaphragm pump you can have uh, scroll pump volume pump gear pump there are several types of pumps are there those are actually low flow rate but very high head pump okay and whenever you need very high pressure development or a high head and flow rate will be limited or very low so in that case you can use positive displacement pump you can have higher volume higher volume pump also for positive displacement that we'll discuss later uh, but for centrifugal pump you can develop very high amount of flow rate but head will be limited so in that case there are mechanisms such as multi staging or enlarging pump or speeding pump so that we'll discuss later for uh, positive displacement pump this definition is that it will be trapping a fixed amount of fluid ok if you see uh, hand pump if you see this hand pump hand pump will have a cylinder like this cylinder will have one valve actually here ok one flap type valve will be there and one uh, rod is coming like this ok and it will have one plunger or piston ok or valve so when using hand pump you are moving it up and down okay when moving up and down water will be falling like this in hand pump this is a lower valve this is upper valve so when uh, pump you are pressing pressing the a when pressing a the handle so upper valve will be closed lower valve will be open okay so this will be lower valve lower valve this is upper valve maybe okay upper valve will be pressing down then upper valve will be closed lower valve will be open so that time you are delivering fluid when you are moving up a is up so that time the opposite phenomenon will happen so that time you are, you will not be delivering any fluid the same thing is happening for other uh, actually sucker or pump later we will discuss in details how this valve motions are linked with fluid flow rate So, this positive displacement pump or saccharide pump or ESP uh, sorry PCP or diaphragm pump those are constant flow rate pump and head can be changing and normally flow rate will be lower and head will be very high U will be low H will be high head or pressure and flow rate ok ideally it can develop any head. Now uh, this saccharoid pump uh, if we consider uh, in a well bore system it will have similar mechanism as hand pump like uh, it will be having well bore it will be having one rod rod coming to the your reservoir in that area where fluid will be there reservoir fluid ok and you have one plunger or piston and from there uh, one surface mechanism will be there from surface mechanism you are giving the relative motion of this rod ok. So, this will be saccharide pump mechanism. So, saccharide pump hand pump all these things are uh, me basically mechanism are same and what is happening in saccharide pump actually let us say or hand pump in hand pump you see one cylinder is there and one valve is here ok and when this hand pump piston is moving up piston or uh, this one will be sealed properly this area sealing properly sealing means there will be very low amount of clearance or leakage so that when piston is moving up and down the fluid should not go back to the this area a b c ok. When you are lifting up this rod because of this action so what is happening the fluid whatever is there whatever fluid is here ok uh, this say fluid area F I am saying F whatever fluid is there in the uh, in the area of F this area F ok this fluid will go here if it is moving up ok. So, you can assume this height may be H ok initially height H uh, so what is the pressure at B? at location B, B location pressure will be 
P equals H rho G. Rho means density of water or any liquid whatever you are pumping. Uh, normally water density will be 1000 meter cube per uh, kg per meter cube. And G value constant 9.81 for SI unit for if you are using FPS unit or field unit then it will be 32.17 uh, uh, pound mass per uh, feet cube. So, whenever it is lifting, so H is going to reduce. So, H is going to reduce that time your fluid is getting delivered. When again you are moving down the piston, again H is increasing. So, H is changing actually. When H is changing, your pressure also changing at the location of B. So, this way the sucker rod pump or pump jack works. Okay. Previously, I have shown you the picture uh, in previous lecture uh, that is in our laboratory setup. In laboratory setup, I have one pump here if you see the picture is pump p is pump and this is your tank water tank okay so tank is like this this big actually so this pipe is connected to tank this is tank actually this whole picture i have cut so something got cut uh, this is inlet or suction pipe suction pipe and from pump one pipe is going like this here Okay, this is called delivery pipe. Delivery pipe. So, suction side or delivery side you can see now. Now, I have one flow meter. Flow meter. And I have one pressure sensor. Here you can see pressure sensor. Pressure, pressure measurement you are doing. Here also another pressure measurement doing here I will have one tachometer, tachometer, uh, there will be one closing valve somewhere, uh, exhaust valve somewhere here I think, somewhere here something, closing valve will be there. So, what happens uh, to draw this H Q curve, H and Q curve? So, start switch on the pump and slowly you initially switch off the pump, the exhaust valve is completely open, then slowly you close down. When if it is positive displacement pump, then your flow meter will be showing same flow rate, but your pressure gauge or pressure sensor here, pressure sensor show higher pressure. Okay. So, this way you draw HQ curve and your uh, hydraulic efficiency curve also will be almost horizontal actually for positive displacement pump. The same uh, thing you can draw for uh, PCP or diaphragm pump or the other type of pump, but if you are using sucker rod pump, so the case will be little bit different because sucker rod pump is having pulsating flow. Okay. If you reduce the pulsating flow, then what you have to do? You have to use some accumulator, Little maybe you can discuss what is accumulator. Okay. So, before you discuss about detail about pump or sucker pump or any pumping system, you have to know certain definition. So, density you already know cubic pound per cubic uh, feet uh, or in meter cube kg per meter cube. Uh, 1 feet of water is 62.4 divided by 1.433 pounds per uh, square inch. Okay. Uh, 10 feet of water will be 4.33 pound per square inch. Head height of fluid column uh, 1 psi equivalent to 2.31 feet of water head. So, pressure head you can calculate pressure head or psi or h or whatever you know, give notation p by gamma or rho g. Rho density g means acceleration due to gravity p is the pressure. If you are using SI unit the life is very easy you can get directly meter head of water. So, normally we uh, compare with equivalent column of water height. Okay. Uh, absolute pressure, uh, here the normally we use the term absolute pressure, actual pressure, uh, pressure gauge, atmospheric pressure. So, absolute pressure uh, always it will be greater than 0. Uh, gauge pressure equals absolute pressure must be atmospheric pressure. Okay. Now, whenever you are talking about pressure and flow rate, normally whenever fluid flow is there, so pressure flow, flow rate another term will be temperature actually. So, Temperature, uh, you should know the conversion unit will be like C, F, degree Rankine, Kelvin. 
So normally for oil industry, you use uh, Rankine temperature or degree Fahrenheit temperature. Other temperature C also K also can be used, but normally people will be uh, specifying in terms of degree Fahrenheit or degree Rankine. Degree Fahrenheit and Rankine formula is 460 plus Fahrenheit equals Rankine temperature. Uh, so, you should know the conversion also and you should know the definition also. Temperature and heat difference also you should know. Heat means uh, amount of energy. Temperature means the if uh, heat is high or low that one you can sense using certain measuring instrument that is temperature. Okay. Uh, now, you go to pressure measurement and flow rate measurement. There are several instruments developed over the time and uh, one is pressure measurement, bottom depression pressure uh, measurement, transducer, pitot tube, orifice plate, venturi plate, every uh, pressure uh, measuring instrument they, they have their own weaknesses strength. So, based on uh, application we can use. So, normally manometer it is used in all laboratories in universities or colleges because very simple one you, um, one pipe will be there. So, that pipe will be measuring the pressure. So, bottom to pressure is also very cheaper it will be available in the local market it is also there in for in our system also in if you see the right side experimental setup the pressure the sensor is there two pressure uh, that bottom tube pressure gauge is there. Uh, bottom tube pressure gauge how it is working? So, it will be like C type on shape ok, C type shape will be there and if you are increasing pressure through this shape this metal pipe. So, what will happen? This C shape actually it will change its shape because of the pressure. Small pressure it will create smaller uh, radius if you are increasing pressure because of pressure it will try to straighten up. If you increase too much pressure maybe it will be completely straight, but normally it will not do like only many kids will be playing like this small, small rolling pipe sort of thing will be there then kids will be blowing and it will be becoming straight again if they are not blowing then it will be rolling up. So, the same technique they are using actually if you are increasing very high pressure. So, it will be straight up now you use some gear mechanism and one needle. Okay, so needle and gear mechanism. What will they do? It will have one dial. So when whenever C is moving, it will be connected to one gear. So gear will be getting rotated. When gear is getting rotated, gear is connected to one needle. So it is moving like this. So needle will be moving left or right. Okay, when high pressure is there, moving uh, uh, or low pressure is there, the slowly needle will be moved left or right. So based on that, and uh, top on the dial, a measurement will be there 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So from there, you can get pressure directly. So that is called bottom tube pressure gauge. Normally, in all fluid laboratories, the people will be using because you can see visually how much pressure is changing. Okay, now this is transducer sort of uh, pressure gauge also came up because piezoelectric material. Piezoelectric material, like if you have any material like this. For example, this is piezoelectric material. So, if you change properties or if you increase pressure, so electrical property will be changed of the system. When electrical properties change, you sense that electrical signal using some electronics device and how much pressure you are giving on this system based on that you can get electrical signal and you can guess okay, this much of pressure is there that, that means pressure will be this much. For example, these days all devices like touch pad and everything everywhere the, this sort of mechanism is being used you are changing pressure or you are trying to bend some uh, piezoelectric material. So, it will change its electrical property based on that you can measure pressure and pitot tube, pitot tube is like this when uh, let us say one pipe is here ok in pipe small pipe you introduce ok very small because of this small hole there will be uh, pressure stagnation will be there because of this stagnation pressure if any fluid is here, if any fluid is here, there is a red color fluid I put here, okay. this column height will increase when fluid is flowing like this, okay, Peter T. When fluid, uh, let us say, okay, the, let us say this is Peter tube and fluid is flowing through this and f some fluid will be getting hit by this area. So, there will be stagnation of pressure. And pressure will be accumulated. So, that pressure will be pressurizing inside whatever column fluid column is there. So, that column height will be increasing fluid column red different color may be ok. Be uh, because of this uh, column height we can check how much pressure is there, how much pressure is being created. So, that can be sensing uh, and that can be converted into your flow rate also ok. 
and some cases if you use orifice plate you create certain orifice for example the pipe is here you can create orifice because of orifice your vena contracta will be getting created okay you create orifice you can put some manometer sort of thing okay and because of this uh, flow changes and creating vena contractor pressure also will be changed well as flu flow rate changing pressure also changing so in that case you can measure pressure similar way you can use venturi meter also so there are several options for pressure measurement based on your application you can select one pressure measurement these days automation is happening so many uh, many cases they are using electronic uh, based uh, pressure measuring system or normal pressure measuring system with electronic connection so that you can automate everything to your uh, main control unit especially these scada system are being used when you are using scada system that means all pressure sensor temperature sensor flow sensor all the sensors will be integrated and it will be going to master computer system where uh, the control uh, people are sitting and checking whole process so they will be observing so in that case everything should be electronically controlled and electrically sensed now we talk about flow meter so in flow meter you create obstruction pressure will be changed flow rate will be changed so in that case you can sense how much flow rate is there in some cases turbine flow meter is there turbine uh, i think you know already that fan turbine wind turbine so this uh, wind turbine is very big but in let's say this much of pipe is there 3 inch 5 inch 6 inch or 1 feet uh, so in that case if you put one turbine so turbine based on flow rate turbine rotational speed will change when rotational speed is changing you sense that speed how much speed is there based on that you calculate how much flow rate can be okay so normally when you design turbine we we first assume that flow rate is this one then we calculate speed now in this case it is ha happening opposite first check the speed based on that you try to extrapolate and see how much flow rate can be possible so this is called turbine flow meter this is also very very easy uh, easily available in the market uh, because construction is very simple one turbine blades are there and it will be rotating and some sensor will be there so that will be saying okay this much of flow rate is there i think in our case also possibly it is turbine type flow meter uh next is electromagnetic e again electromagnetic system also it will change your flow if flow rate is changing electromagnetic property also will change so you can get different flow rate positive displacement so positive displacement system such as like if you have any piston based system or a progressive cavity pump pcp i already told that pcp can be used as meter metering pump like uh, positive displacement pump what is happening in human heart one time pumping it is developing i think 375 75, 75 mm i forgot the exact digit uh, so, so a fixed amount of six volume of fluid okay two stroke another fixed volume three stroke another fixed volume so every stroke it is giving fixed volume sakarad pump also when it is moving up fixed volume develop again fixed volume again fixed volume so fixed volume again pcp fixed rotation fixed volume so fixed volume it will be developing so whenever you need fixed volume flow measurement okay so in that case you can use actually positive displacement type pump fixed volume you take deliver so that way you can measure anemometer anemometer related to air flow measurement uh, some ultrasonic measurement also develop some mass flow correlates flow meter also develop so no need to discuss too much details of these things but actually you should know what are the different flow meter options available for your pumping or flow measurement in piping systems or pumping systems and which one you have to select that also you have to know okay now um, sakarad pump if you see any oil field picture you will see this one very common picture sakarad pump beam pump because 80% of all oil wells are fitted with uh, a certain sort of artificial lift and 70 uh, about 70% of all artificial lifts will be sakarad pump so the application is huge because it is very simplest to use and simplest to handle all those surface equipment is very much heavy and what are the equipment here uh this uh, is taken from shutterstock one website this picture and if you want to go for more videos just please search youtube you will find lots of videos there and explanation there regarding sakarad pump how it is working here i will explain the different equipments so the sakarad pump will or beam pump one working beam is here okay this is called working beam and working beam is connected to samson post this is called samson post samson 
post now this is walking beam and walking beam is connected to horse head okay this is called horse head and horse head uh, is connected to one where is called bridle okay bridle is connected to your polish rod polish rod will go through one seal section is called stuffing box stuffing box and there will be one t junction this is looking like t so it's called t junction okay now there is one pin or a bearing will be there this is called a uh, saddle bearing saddle bearing this will be called tail pin and this is called a uh, pitman arm okay in ic engine term they will be saying connecting rod but here in oil and gas industry they will be using the term as called pitman arm so pitman arm is connected to one crank this is called crank crank pin this is crank pin this is called crank and crank is connected to gear box there will be gear box gear box gear box is connected to one sieve or pulley this is called sieve or pulley pulley this sieve is connected to one v belt okay you can see this is also sieve this is called engine sieve this is called sieve this is uh, unit type unit side unit or pumping unit side sheave this is called engine sheave and see this sheave is connected to one motor okay motor and motor will be connected to electrical unit uh, that switch okay so it will be connected to your main grids um, okay now uh, some heavy mass also you can see here right heavy mass you can see this is called counterbalance mass okay so what is happening there when motor will be running when motor is running motor will be giving power to your small sieve or small pulley so pulley will be connected to your v belt or some belt or chain mechanism so belt will be transferring power to your gear so here pulley crank here will be gear box will be there c will be connected to gear box so gear box will be there okay so v belt is transferring power to gear box so it is reducing some speed gear box will be reducing further speed then that speed will be connected to your crank okay so crank is connected to pitman arm pitman arm to walking beam walking beam to horse head horse head to the bridle bridle to polish rod polish rod to seal section seal section to t section uh, seal section to uh, oh, sorry polish rod will be connected to your main sucker rod pump uh, sucker rod so uh, this polish rod is going through through through, through there will be sucker rod okay so polish rod will be crossing this stuffing box stuffing box actually seal section which will not allow fluid to leaking okay now if you see whole system first walking beam let's say this is samson post and this is my walking beam so what will happen samson post is holding this walking beam and one will be bridle uh, saddle pin saddle pin or some bearing sort of mechanism so when left side arm is moving up and down okay so this side is moving up and down like seesaw kids will be doing seesaw right so that way it left if left side you are pulling pushing pulling pushing so right side also will be moving up and down moving up and down when it is moving up and down so this whole this is connected to horse head horse head to bridle where 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 line where line to your polish rod polish rod to your sucker rod so this way 
power will be transferred to sucker rod, sucker rod to further going down, 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 it will be going to your plunger assembly. When it is going to plunger assembly, your fluid will be lifted up actually because of this action. And this horse head is designed, you see, you can see horse head. Uh, um, if, if I draw uh, here uh, Samson post and beam and horse head is designed like this, you can see why it is designed like this, you can assume this one is a circle, okay. this is radius, okay. this is circle and this is radius. So, when this bridle or sucker rod is going like this, so this must be vertical. Okay. This bridle and polished rod and sucker rod all must be vertical in single vertical line. So, if you want to make single vertical line, then your horse head and this bridle, bridle must be tangent to the horse head. When uh, horse, horse head is moving up or down, so bridle will make perfectly vertical tangent actually. If it is not making it particle, uh, perfectly tangent, then what will happen? Bridle will make like this. So, this will be give, giving extra force to your bridle polish rod, polish rod is entering into seal. So, seal would get extra pressure or extra force. So, that extra force will be destroy your sealing arrangement. So, to avoid that one, the horse is in such a way that it will be like an arc, okay. because this arc and bridle will be tangent on the arc. Okay. This is arc and this is arc. Okay and this is bridle, bridle is a tangent on the arc. So, because of this tangential tangent, so it will be completely vertical all time. So, the design uh, radius and curvature of the uh, horse head also very important and it is sometime because of this head, people say horse head, sometime people will say nodding donkey, donkey continuous nodding, okay, it is doing like this. Now, sometimes they will be say horse head. Uh, so, uh, oil industry they use absurd terms sometime, uh, uh, they may have certain reason, but for example, they will be using monkey board, they will be using mud house, dog house, sometimes they will be using uh, rat hole, mouse hole, uh, although this is not my part of this course, but if you are studying petroleum engineering, you will be familiar with this specific term rat hole, mouse hole, um, monkey board, uh, mud house, dog house, horse head, uh, donkey, nodding donkey all these terms will become. Again, new terms are there for example, pit, pit, pitman arm, but in IC engine they will be using as a uh, connecting rod, okay. Walking beam is a seesaw beam, it is normally simple beam, they, they will be saying walking beam, okay. So, uh, they use different terms, so you have to remember because if you are uh, thinking about working in the oil industry, so they will be using their own technical terms instead of your actual mechanical engineering terms whatever you are using. Mechanical engineering they will be using piston, here you are using as a plunger. So, function is actually same. Uh, so, you have to know the terms and if you are mechanical engineering, you are studying mechanical engineering or you studied already mechanical engineering. So, you can link your terms with oil industry terms, so that you can understand easily. Okay. Uh, here, uh, why this counterbalance mass is there? Counterbalance mass is there like this. Uh, when walking beam is here and it is moving up and down, okay what is happening when it is lifting up say for example okay when uh, let's say this is my samson post and this is walking beam and this size motor is there so motor you are moving like this okay motor is doing like this and this size my sucker rod pump is here when it is moving up and down sucker rod pump also move up and down it is moving up means sucker rod pump is moving up like your hand pump okay y you are moving up Yes, in hand pump actually you are pushing down. So, when you are pushing down actually you are lifting fluid, but in this case this end when you are pushing down it is moving up and you are lifting fluid that means you need more energy. Okay, So, this time you need more energy, but when hand pump moving up, so you do not need energy actually. right? So, one time you need energy, one time do not need energy. So, when you need energy, so that time you need very high energy actually in uh, sucker pumping system. Okay, uh, But if you uh, putting it downward, so you do not need so much energy because rod is its own weight, so it will be moving down. So, to averaging the averaging out these two very high energy and very low energy, what they will do? They will be putting mass. So, when it is moving up side, so this heavy mass or counterbalance mass will help. When it is moving down, counterbalance mass 
will not help it will absorb energy so that will it will be uh, averaging this energy requirement so motor power requirement will be lower and bearing and your uh, double reduction gearbox or triple reduction gearbox or v build system will be requiring very less amount of power to transfer to your crank and pitmanum and working beam and horse head all this side okay